Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome back to Hidden Treasures, the brand new live show that's brought to you from the Natural History Museum here in London. I'm your host Connor and today we're coming to you live from the Spirit Mammals Collection here in the museum and we're down here for about 20 minutes. Now in Hidden Treasures you get to decide what we see, what cabinets we look in, what specimens we check out and because we're live you get to choose where we're going by entering it into the live chat box. So I've got my phone on me keeping track of all your suggestions and your comments. So make sure you're getting those in now because we're only down here for 20 minutes, but you also get to submit your questions for our fantastic museum scientists, of which we're gonna be joining one really, really soon. And before we get started, you'll also see a live poll going up in the chat box in which you'll get to decide where we go in the next show. So that's gonna be going out on the first Friday of next month. So that would be Friday the 7th of October, at the same time, 3.30 p.m. UK time. And you've got two choices, the flies collection or the plants collection. So make sure you vote there. But without further ado, I think we should get started. But just one last note, if you're a bit squeamish, there are some specimens in here that you might find hard to look at. There's some that are, there's whole mammals, parts of mammals and different jars. So make sure you look away if you're feeling a bit of discomfort. But let's meet our scientists. So follow me. So hello there. Hey Natalie, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm great. And um, so you're working down here. What is it exactly that you do here at the museum? Uh, so I'm a senior scientist here. Most of my research is on biodiversity. So I'm interested in evolution and right. conservation and things like that. But I also work a lot with mammals, which is why I've come down here with you today. Excellent. And so we're surrounded by all of these cabinets. How many specimens do you think are in here? Do you have like an estimate or anything? Yeah, or? yeah. So the mammal collection is pretty big and it's spread across lots of different rooms and different types of collections. So most mammal stuff is generally skulls and then dry skins and that's right. in a different building. Okay. Um, so in total we've got 400,000 specimens and in here we've got about 30,000 wow. uh, in, in alcohol basically. <laughs> wow, okay. So yeah, everything that you see today is going to be in these sorts of jars and I think you We've got a mystery specimen for us as well, um, but I think before we check that out, let's have a look at some of the things that are right here in front of us. So I'm quite interested in seeing something that's just like a bit bizarre, a bit weird. Can you can you find something weird for us? I don't think it'll be too hard. Sure, <laughs> sure. So these cabinets are designed to display one individual pretty much of every one of the 26 orders of mammals. So in total, there are about 6,500 species and then there are these 26 big um, groupings. Right. Um, so I think weird is, is a slightly mean thing to say about <laughs> anything. So I would say these are amazing and wonderful creatures. So uh, to give you you an example of one that's right next to me is yeah. the platypus so people have probably heard of platypuses they're the really cool ones in Australia that have the beak um, but these are part of a group called the monotremes um, which includes echidnas as well that actually lay eggs so it's a mammal group that lays eggs and we've got a little platypus egg here which I think is very cute very cool uh, there's also a dissected uh, series of, of platypus heads here um, and so you can see the brain you can also see bits of the teeth um, but you can also see all the the sense organs in sort of the edge of the beak um, which the platypus uses to find food and it can actually um, detect electrical signals and things like that so wow. these are really really cool it's incredible rather than weird <laughs> <laughs> so we actually had a question through already from Leia who wanted to see the monotremes so we, we're already in the right place excellent, excellent. so what, what makes monotremes unique you mentioned there was an egg there and that's not really normal for mammals is it no not no. widespread yeah so so what defines a mammal is uh, some funny ear bones uh, they right. have fur and they also have milk um, so platypuses and echidnas don't have nipples they just exude milk uh, oh. and so the the babies sort of sit and sort of lap the milk up which is very cute but those are the only ones that have eggs then the other big groups we have are the marsupials which mm -hmm. there are some representatives here yeah. so these are possums and koalas and kangaroos and so they have very tiny underdeveloped young that then climb up into a pouch and yeah. feed there until they're big enough to come out and live in the world and then the rest of the mammals are placental mammals like humans so the the uh, babies stay inside the parent for a lot longer feeding using the placenta and they come out sort of fully formed pretty right. much. Right okay well so great overview there so thank you so much Leia everyone else make sure you're getting your questions in for Natalie. Let's check out the mystery specimen I think so if you'd like to lead the way. Sure let's go this Way. Let's check this out. If you come behind me and I'll uh, okay. pull out my cabinet right. of mysteries. Okay, so let me get out this uh, 
a mystery specimen. I thought this would just be a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of the weirder things that we've got down here. <laughs> so let me grab it out with a pair of tweezers. So this thing's actually weird. That's not just a, an unfair term. This uh, is actually I'm weird, I'm allowed to it? call this weird. It's fine. <laughs> no, the species isn't weird. It's just okay. a weird specimen. So I just think oh it's a cool God. specimen. What so you've that? got like spikes and okay. uh, like ridges and all kinds of weird things. So this is part of a mammal. Um, and so I thought it'd be fun to yes. guess what mammal it comes from and what part is it. So yeah, everyone watching along at home, make sure you pop in the chat box what you think our mystery specimen is. I have absolutely no idea. That's <laughs> really, really strange looking. But yeah, make sure you get all your comments and all your suggestions coming in. Um, we actually had another question coming from Charlie who asked about the funny bone ears that are specific to mammals. I don't know if you'd be able to tell us a little bit more about what, what makes those different from reptiles? Or uh, other yeah, animals? so so this is one of the things that happens really early on in mammalian evolution. Yeah. So the bones which did form the sort of jaw of the reptiles get smaller and end up forming those small bones, um, so like the hammer and the stirrup, right. and those sorts of things that are inside our inner ear. Yeah. And so in mammals, they're part of the ear. In reptiles, they're part of the jaw. And yeah. so that's one of the diagnostic features of whether it's a reptile or whether it's a mammal. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie, for the question. Uh, we've got some other cool things here, though. So let's <laughs> let's check out these. What else do we have on here? So I thought it would be cool to just give you an idea of the great diversity of, of mammals with our 6,500 species. Yeah. And so I wanted to show you the biggest mammal and the smallest one. Oh, cool. So right. uh, unsurprisingly, I couldn't fit a blue whale in a jar. Yes. <laughs> so instead, <laughs> here I've got a blue whale eyeball so this is Whoa. actually from a baby blue whale it's not even from an adult so they can grow to up to about 30 meters um, and they weigh about 200 tons which is crazy so blue whales are the biggest animal that ever lived on earth um, even bigger than the dinosaurs and the megalodon and all wow. that uh, so the other thing that's in there which looks a bit weird are these little chunky bits sort of down here which are covered in hairs so these are the baleen um, so you may have seen Hope, our big blue whale, in the main hall, and she's in a sort of diving pose. And so the way that these baleen whales feed, which is quite different to whales with teeth like dolphins and killer whales, um, so the whales like Hope have this baleen, which is this sort of weird material that's a bit like your hair or right. your fingernails. It's made of the same material, and it like, acts like a sieve. So they take a big gulp of water, and then they push all the water out, um, through the kind of sieve-like hairy bits, um, and that's how they feed. And so these are the kind of hairy bits um, preserved in a nice soft format. So often when you yeah. see them, you'll see it as part of a corset or something like right. that. So it'll be something very hard and inflexible, but yeah. actually in life, they're quite flexible and kind of fun and hairy. So I thought that would be a nice one you to show you. you see them in the corset, do you mean like literally like the Yeah, the yeah. So old corsets were made out of whale bone. Yeah. So it wasn't actually the bone of the whale, it was this baleen material. So. That's, uh, that's yeah. so bizarre. Super weird. <laughs> that's Super so weird. bizarre. Okay, well, that's really cool. So just before we move on to the smallest, Hannah uh, has guessed that the mystery specimen is a pincer. Ooh, a no. Pincer. Okay. Good, good guess, but okay. not quite. Okay. All right, okay. Well, keep your guesses <laughs> coming, everyone. Um, can we take a look at the smallest specimen? Yes. Let's have a look at that. Yes, okay. So this is the, the smallest species of mammal. This is... Um, what's called a bumblebee bat. So I will take one out of the jar and pop it down so you can get a good look. They're really cute and fluffy. They really want to kind of cuddle oh, one, but yeah. they're sort oh, it's of... Tiny. It's really teeny, teeny, weeny. Uh, so let me put the jar down out of the way. Yeah, so these are absolutely tiny. So, oh, sorry, um, <laughs> walking into things. Um, <laughs> so these are about three centimetres long when they're fully grown. Uh, the skull is only about 11 millimetres and they weigh about two grams. Uh, so they're found in uh, Thailand and Myanmar. They're right. not doing brilliantly in the wild, so we, we've got to keep an eye on them. Okay. Um, but they, you know, they're so small that they find it hard to be active for too long. So they're only active for about 30 minutes at dusk and about 20 minutes at dawn, feeding on flies and um, other insects and also right. spiders um, quite commonly. So these are, you know, this is the two extremes of mammalian body size. So yeah. 30 wow. meters and three centimeters, which is a pretty impressive uh, range, I yeah. think. 
And you, you mentioned that these weren't doing so well in the wild. Does the museum kind of contribute to like active research into animals and conservation projects? Uh, yes, yeah, so the museum is, is pretty active in doing all kinds of different conservation projects. We're usually involved in doing surveys, so finding right. out what species are where, yeah. but also the idea of the science of taxonomy, where mm. we name new species and we help people sort of who are coming to use the collections to do that kind of research. Because if we don't know what's there, it's really yeah. hard to actually conserve things. Right. And so that's one of the primary things that the researchers here are involved in. So it's a bit like a library. In a yeah, yeah, yeah. You could think of this as a gigantic library yeah. of uh, we uh, animals looks and jars. Like one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had an, uh, uh, we've had quite a lot of questions coming. Um, Nick, going back to the uh, blue whale eye, asks if um, an animal has a bigger eye, does that mean that it can see better? Necessarily? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, different animals have different adaptations. So you'll you'll generally find, as a rule, animals that are using their eyes a lot to hunt do tend to have larger eyes and yeah. maybe eyes that are focused at the uh, like in the front of the the skull. Um, and things which you know, like moles, very very tiny eyes, or you probably can't even see the eyes at all. So there's a general rule there, right. but it's not like one of those perfect correlations that right. the bigger your eye is, the better you can see. Um, okay. Um, so that's great. Thank you so much for answering that. We've also got a question about the smallest specimen and I think we should check out something else. So Josh wanted to ask why the bumblebee bats are so small. <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, most um, so most vertebrate groups will have this this range of, of species. So mm -hmm. why why are things small? Why are things large? Um, it's it's really hard to say why are these so small, but they do probably, which is really cool, represent probably the smallest you can be and still be a mammal. Because one of the key things about being a mammal is that mammals are maintaining their own body temperature. Right. So sometimes refer to that as being warm blooded. So you can only be down to a certain size before that becomes pretty impossible. Right. And so the smallest mammals do struggle, you know, with being active for a long period. So shrews would be another good example. They okay. have to keep eating and eating and eating yeah. or they, also, <laughs> they, they just die. Um, so these probably do represent the smallest um, level, but exactly why mm. these, this particular lineage evolved to be tiny, no idea. Okay, well, there we go, Josh. We got, we got, we got an answer. I think that was a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky when there's so much diversity in the world to kind of, yeah. Keep yeah, I mean, it's, it it's, yeah, no, it's impossible to know with some of these things. I mean, there are tiny, tiny little species of frog as well, which are even smaller. Yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah. You should definitely look this up. Frogs that are so small they can't jump. So they wow. jump, but they can't <laughs> land. Very funny YouTube videos. So um, we're getting loads and loads of comments in here. People are really liking the bats, but also the monotremes. I wonder if there's anything else in these cabinets we could check out that are along those sorts of lines. Yeah, we can go and find some more monotremes. Yeah, Let me just that would be great. Pop this out of the way and let's go for a wander. Okay, um, lead the way. So all these cupboards look really similar. So yeah. there's always a little bit of fun as I try and remember which stuff is where. Okay, but I think, think we're going down this one. Yeah, so monotremes are down here. Let's see what's the best cupboard we can find. So yeah, this is a, an exciting attempt of us all to squeeze into some very tiny uh, Yeah, I wonder if gaps. we can get the camera all the way down here. Wow, this is an amazing cabinet, if you can get a, a shot of this. Wow. So the, what's that spiky thing right in front of us? So these are echidnas. So these are the other um, animals that lay eggs, the other monotremes. Um, there's a couple of different species of echidna. Um, so we've got some really cool stuff here. So this is probably like, this is a good one. So this is a teeny, teeny, oh weeny goodness. little baby. So this is what they look like after they've just come out of the egg. And one of the cutest facts about monotremes is their babies are called puggles. <laughs> um, which I absolutely love. So this is a puggle um, from an echidna. Um, and then there's also here, there's an echidna egg, which I'll point towards the oh, camera. Yeah. Um, so again, they're, they're pretty small um, eggs, but um, yeah, very, very cool wow. stuff going on. Um, let's see if there's really, anything really else cool good down here. Um, oh, there's another puggle here, which I can pick up to yeah. make it easier for the camera. Uh, so this is a slightly bigger puggle. Uh, <laughs> And this is a this is a puggle from a, um, a platypus. Right, you can so, see the little beak at the yeah, top there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
So again, these these develop pretty slowly, much like uh, marsupial babies do as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these are these are pretty amazing animals. And so the echidna acts a lot like a well, it's an anteater, so it eats ants as a long beak um, and long tongue for for eating the ants. But also it'll hide a bit yeah. like a hedgehog, so it'll sort of bury its head in the right. sand. <laughs> but they've they've got really bad eyesight, so they've got tiny little eyes. And so if you stand still for long enough in Australia, they will sort of come out and stuff oh, around. Really? And, and try and ch check That's you so out. Cool. So they are they are pretty adorable. So we've we've got we've got a few minutes left. So if you've got any more suggestions for what the mystery specimen is, let us know in the next few minutes because we're going to reveal it at the end of the episode. We've got a question from James who says, "Do we have any mammal specimens from North America? If Ooh. so, are they?" Easy yeah, to get to. <laughs> I mean, there's loads. Um, what kind of thing in particular? Um... Mm, I'm not sure. James hasn't really provided more. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got another question from Leia while we figure out what we want to see from North America. Oh, we could. Uh, there's some possums in here. Oh, These yeah, I think that could work. Possums in North America. Yeah, let's, let's, let's have a look at those. A, that could definitely a good, work. A good possum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So just quickly to pick up on that question from Leo, who asked about what date some of these things were collected from. Are they from all over the museum's history or? Yeah, yeah, so they're a big, big mixture of things. Um, so these are the wrong kinds of didelphids. So these are all didelphids that come from South America. So uh, okay. the possum that you get, the opossum in North yes. America, these are related to that. And there's loads and loads of these possums that live in South America, but unfortunately only one that goes into North America. So uh, I uh, okay, failed right. at my, my task. <laughs> but yeah, so. We gave it a good go. It's, it must be hard to keep track of everything Yeah, in here. there's so many <laughs> specimens in here. So there are a lot of these specimens are hundreds of years old. I think the oldest specimen we have in here is about 300 years old. Um, but most things were collected in the last sort of 150, 100 years. Right. Um, we haven't done a huge amount of collecting since about the 1960s. Um, okay. about. But we do still get, you know, um, so particularly sort of for cetaceans, so whales and dolphins, when they wash up on the beach, we'll often get those specimens um, donated to us. Right. So we have some newer ones from that as well. So um, I think so. We're coming up to a few more minutes left. Remember to keep any other suggestions of what the mystery specimen is coming through. I know it's quite tricky, but any ideas at all, please do keep them coming. Let, I think we've got time to check out one last thing. If you could pick something, maybe preferably close, oh, that yes. you think would be Come really cool. Here. Let's have a look. Come down here. I think <laughs> and then we'll go fine. check out that mystery specimen before uh, we reveal yes, it. Yes, yes. Come and Excellent. see my, my favourite, my baby favourites. Uh, <laughs> so um, let's open this up. Okay, so these are Tenrex. Um, so if you want to know more about Tenrex, they, they should be um, on our Nature Live series. I did one about Tenrex. Uh, last year, I think. Um, so that will fill you in. But just to give you a bit of an idea, these are all species that live in Madagascar. There's about 35 species, but they're an amazing example of this big adaptive radiation. So they're really closely related, but they look really, really different. Um, so, I mean, here's one that looks tiny. quite a lot like a shrew, little yeah. teeny weeny one, but look how long his tail is. This is a, a long tailed species. And so these look like shrews. But then if I pop this one back in and show you some of the others down here. So these ones look like, um, I'll turn it around a bit so you can see a bit better, but these look just like hedgehogs. So these are really closely related to each other, but very distantly related to hedgehogs. Right. So this is a really good example of where we see convergent evolution. So it's one of those things that really helps us prove Darwin's idea of natural selection, because these things do similar things. They live really far away. They're very distantly related. So they look, they still look really yeah. similar because they do similar things. And then these ones are my absolute favorites. So I'm trying to tip this up a bit so you can see. So these are stripey. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is bright yellow in real life, absolutely bright yellow, um, really, really spiky. And they have a little organ on the back with their spines where they can rub their spines together, make ultrasonic noises to communicate with each other. Um, mm. which is super cool. So they look like little tiny bumblebees crossed with um, hedgehogs. Uh, very, very cute. Uh, a little bit aggressive in the wild, uh, but good fun to wow. play with. Thanks um, for showing us those. So no Nick and Christina were loving the Tenrex, but I think we need to head back to the mystery specimen and find sure. a reveal of what it is. So if you want to lead the way. We've do. got a few more guesses in. So Pranil guesses oh, it was a tongue. <laughs> Hannah guessed that it was a tailbone. 
and Leia is really, really confused about the mystery specimen. So I think <laughs> let's 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 finally reveal to people what it is. Okay, I'll pop it out so that you can have a look again. But this is actually what's called um, a baculum. So this is the penis of right. an agouti. Okay. Um, so agoutis are. Um, relatives of guinea pigs. They're basically okay. gigantic guinea pigs, but they're covered in, so that this part at the top is called the penile flower, which yeah. is kind of cute, but then it's got some horrible <laughs> looking spikes and then it's covered in spines all along. And there's oh. a bone inside that. So most mammals, apart from humans, elephants, um, you know, uh, things with hooves, rabbits and stuff like that, most of them will have a bone inside their penis, which helps um, mating take place. And so all of this is about making sure that mating is successful in this group. So just in case people don't know what an agouti yeah, looks like, useful. I have some okay. pictures of some agoutis. <laughs> so yeah. they're yeah, about the size of a cat, maybe slightly bigger. Um, so again, there's some, some quite fun videos of these on the internet. So they live in South America. Uh, but I just always find this, every time I bump into the specimen, it makes me giggle. So. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much You're for welcome. sharing it. And I think that pretty much brings us towards the end of the time we've got here. So thank you so much for showing us around, Natalie. No worries. I'll leave you to sort out all of this stuff if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much to everyone who watch along at home. Uh, thank you for so many amazing suggestions and questions. I'm sorry we didn't get time to cover them all. And we'll follow up with those with you um, after the end of this video and make sure that uh, if you want to check out where we're heading in the next show that you put your suggestion in that live poll the next show is going out on the 7th of october that's a friday at 3 30 p.m uk time you've got the choice of the plants collection or the fly collection so make sure you get your suggestion in there but if you're watching artifact you can also pop it in the comments below also you can pop it on our social media if you follow us and use the hashtag hidden treasures. And if you liked what you saw today, make sure you subscribe to the Natural History Museum YouTube channel to make sure you're catching up on all of the great content that we're putting out on there. But for now, thank you so much for everyone who, for watching along and I hope to see you in the next show. Goodbye.